to a rather miserable Stevenson Park here in Dungannon. And following what can best be described as a miserable performance by Ireland a week ago in the opening game of the Five Nations Championship, we're concentrating on all Ireland Division One action and especially on the game here at Dungannon, vital to both Ulster sides in Division One. That's Dungannon and the visitors, Ballymena. Ballymena retained the back line following defeat a fortnight ago by Old Wesley, but have made some changes up front. Simon Booth returns to the loose head prop position and is joined by Steve Smith and Peter Miller back from international duty. There's a change in the back row with Colin Wallace, normally a number eight, moving to the blind side to allow Davy Allen, who hasn't been playing senior rugby for almost six seasons, to come into the middle of the back row. The Ballymena side is captained by Kenny Andrew. Dungallon welcome back Irish international Ronnie Carey and Wilfie Nelson to their back line. Up front, they've made a change also in the back row. Jeremy Hastings moves to the middle to accommodate brother Johnny, and Paddy John switches to his international position of second row, where he'll turn out alongside the Dungannon skipper, Willie Anderson. The referee, a bit like the players, not relishing the conditions this afternoon, is from the Leinster Society, Mr. Gordon Black. Derek McAleese, Irish international outside half, gets this game underway and uh, straight away you can see what the conditions are going to be like here at Stevenson Park. Normally one of the, the best drained pitches in Ulster and indeed in Ireland, but there's a fair bit of surface water lying and that's going to make life difficult for scrum halves. And the two scrum halves in opposition, Andy Matchett for Ballymena and all in white, Ashley Blair for Dungannon. And a fine kick initially didn't find touch and the reply didn't find the in goal area correctly so it's going to be a 22 dropout a vital game this for both sides because Dungannon with just one win from five games desperately need both points as indeed do Ballymena with one game from one win from four games both sides have uh, ironically beaten the reigning All-Ireland champions Gary Owen that's a good drop out for Dungannon. That's well taken in by tight head prop Gary Leslie. Blair, office opposite number Matchett. And Gordon Black will give the scrummage. Well, already the rain coming down is going to make a total nonsense of handling rugby. That's Andy Matchett. So two very useful front rows. Lots of experience in the Ballymena front row. Peter Miller, Irish international replacement on the tight head side. On the far side is Simon Booth and the man in the middle, the formidable Stevie Smith. So early advantage in terms of uh, territory to Ballymena. And free has been given against Dungannon and against Gary Leslie. That's taken on by Wallace playing on the flank and Dungannon haven't retreated 10 meters that's quickly taken by Matchett looking for support he's got it from Steve Smith the lion great driving by the Ballymena pack McAleese needs a bit of help he's got it from Mickey Rainey and from Davy Nickel, the new center and straight away that Ballymena pressure has resulted in a penalty and it's right in front of the post and this is just the start that Ballymena wanted Derek McAleese, who won his uh, sole Irish cap against France in Paris last year. Makes no mistake from short range and gives Ballymena the start that they wanted. Three and a half minutes gone. Dungannon nil and Ballymena three. Keith McGarry into a fairly stiffish breeze. Davy Tweed takes it the second attempt. Good support from Steve Smith. Match it waits. Well, McAleese, that was well charged down by Johnny Boyd. If he can control it, he has, and he's got the try. And what a splendid repost for Dungannon. Well, it looked to be well set up. A nice wristy pass, and look how quickly Boyd came through, like a missile, and he controlled it beautifully. Nice skills, and a splendid try. Keith McGarry from a difficult angle. And not too far away. Stuart Lang with the restart. The Dungannon pack weight. The wettest part of the field. Interesting little tactic. And there seemed to be a man offside. 
perhaps there's a piece of shoving at any rate Gordon Black has given the penalty to Ballymena and already the jerseys and the shorts absolutely soaked and Derek McAleese is going to have another crack at goal well, Derek McAleese with the opening points of the game to his credit for Ballymena hoping to restore their lead after what was a, a shock try by Johnny Boyd well that's a great thump oh a splendid kick by the big fella that really was as good a kick as you're going to see in even the best of conditions, which we're not getting certainly here at Stevenson Park. Jeremy Hastings at the back of the Dungannon line and his brother Johnny in front of him, then Willie Anderson. Number five for Ballymena and black is Davy Tweed. That's very untidy. result of that rather scrappy piece of line art play is that it's a, a put into the scrum for Dungannon Ashley Blair did Ballymena snap McGarry did well to get it away under pressure Keith McGarry formerly of Methodist College and Queen's University his second senior season with Dungannon Stevie Smith Well tidied by Ballymena, Peter Miller. In fact, it was Simon Booth. That's Steve Smith who couldn't hold. Match it is taken by Makaki. Great wriggling by the Ulster scrum half. And he's found the support from his pack. And he's got himself out. McAleese, that's Nickel. He needs help. Kenny Andrew and Steve Smith are both there. It's well driven by the Ballymena skipper, Kenny Andrew. Now the question is, can he turn his body round and make the ball available? Ballymena have done well. Play on, not a knock forward. Simon Booth trying to drive right through everybody. And Dungannon penalised for being offside, a decision which hasn't gone down well with the home crowd. Good hard work by those men in black. And there's the formidable Stevie Smith and Simon Booth, who, uh, believe it or not, played goalkeeper for Northern Ireland schoolboys back in the mid-'80s. For a couple of seasons, he's uh, put on two stones to give himself that extra bulk to play senior league rugby as a loose head prop McAleese three out of three and that further increases the Ballymena lead with 13 minutes gone it's done Gannon five and Ballymena nine and all nine points from this man Derek McAleese well they seem to be enjoying it despite the dreadful weather but after a bright start we had uh, 14 points in as many minutes it's now quietened down Johnny Boyd couldn't control Paul Archer. And water skis are perhaps what's needed in that part of the field. Or else very large flippers. Dungannon have won that. That's John Hastings. And Ballymena infringing. And Dungannon will get the penalty. Blair wastes no time. And takes Dungannon into the Ballymena half. That's a quick throw. Oh, nicely taken. Hastings to Boyd. Well, it's almost impossible to control. And uh, Ballymena get themselves offside. It came off a Ballymena player and a man came in. Although perhaps Gordon Black thought that a Ballymena man played on the ground after the tackle. And somebody from Ballymena has uh, rather foolishly given Gordon Black a bit of back chat. And this will give Ashley Blair, I'm quite sure, a decent chance to close the gap to a single point. Ashley Blair with 18 league points this season. And now 21. Successful kick then by Ashley Blair and one point between them as we go into the second quarter. And I think that a, a rub with a very, very wet sponge won't cure, I'm sure. Coming up to half an hour played. Dungannon 8, Ballymena 9. That's just gone over the line and no more. Well pulled in by Gary Leslie. And Gannon drive over and Blair says it's there and the referee says it's not coming. And because Dungannon didn't uh, make use of it quickly enough, the put in has gone to Ballymena.
And again, Makaki takes it against the head. Well, that's good work, but it's been charged on. This could be nasty enough for Dungannon. And the wind forces Stanley McDowell to make a poorish clearance. And uh, it's rather ironic that two strikes against the head for Dungannon have actually cost them ground. So Balamina right on the home line. Well taken by Tweed. Now he'll go for it, I'm sure. Gordon Black watching carefully. Balamina will try to rumble round and perhaps go for the try. Great Dungannon defence at this stage. Gordon Black well positioned. Has he spotted a try? No, he said it's going to be a five metre scrum and it's going to be to Balamina. So good Dungannon defence from a great take by Davy Tweed and the pressure very much on Dungannon. Well, that's how close they are, Balamina. And that's a better scrum by them. Gordon Black, just as Balamina moved it, the side of the scrummage had gone round 90 degrees. So with about eight minutes remaining, can uh, Balamina press home the advantage they've enjoyed for most of this half? Davy Allen, match it, trying to squeeze through. And still nothing coming. Well, they're very, very close. Lusk at the front for Balamina, behind him Tweed. It's McCackie for Dungannon to throw. That's gone loose, over the line. Balamina dive and claim the try, and Gordon Black says no. But it was knocked over the Dungannon line by a Dungannon man, and the scrum will go to Balamina. And it's uh, about 15 metres infield, so it's in a much, much better position for them. Because Balamina now have options on both sides. Wallace has broken off. Great Dungannon shove. Match it. Well, he's a little terrier. He's kept possession. The question, can Valamina now scrape this ball back? It's in there somewhere. Chambers coming in at scrum half. McAleese. Oh, that's a lovely pass. That's Simpson. Mickey Rainey. And Valamina penalised for holding on to the ball after the tackle. And that was very, very close indeed to a try. McGarry with the restart. Tweed with the tap. McAleese. Mickey Rainey, taken by Paddy Johns. Well released by Balamina. McAleese, not a lot of room. But Simpson, thumping tackle by little Ronnie Carey. And Murphy Nelson and Paul Archer coming through for Dungannon and into the puddle. And a penalty against Dungannon for going over in the tackle. It's a fair way out, but I have a funny feeling that Derek McAleese may just decide to have a crack before half-time. And he certainly is. He's kicked three out of three this afternoon, Derek McAleese. This more difficult than the previous trio. With the angle, it's uh, about 45 metres. A final glance at the post. He's had to plow his way through the water. Oh, that is as good a kick as you're going to see anywhere. What a smasher from McAleese. Keith McGarry. Back in tightly on the Dungannon side. Knocked forward by a Balamina hand. And the home team will get the put into the scrummage. Kenny Andrew. The very experienced Balamina skipper. So four points adrift. Dungannon, I don't think, will be too displeased about that. They'll have a huge wind advantage in the second half. And it's up to them to use it. Blair. Jeremy Hastings. And a fair old lick. He's crossed the gain line, which is good play. Blair. McGarry. That's wrong-footed Stuart Lang. But Archer's on him. And Lang did well. Oh, that's a nice gesture. And McAleese, too. That's not straight, but well taken in by Dungannon. And Balamina will get the put into the scrum. So Dungannon trying desperately just to make sure they, at the very least, stay in Balamina territory at the end of this 
blustery first half here at Stevenson Park. Well, just as we look at the flag, the wind seems to drop very slightly. McAleese, and he's got under that wonderfully. A rare mistake by Stanley McDowell. Plenty of time. Now he stepped back inside his 22, so if he kicks him there and it goes straight into touch, it'll have to come back. It's sat up and uh, advantage to Balamina. That's well taken. That's Alan Simpson. And across comes Dungannon. And I think the throw in was perhaps forward. Well, full marks to Alan Simpson and to Davy Nickel. Quick thinking by the Balamina newcomers to the visiting three quarter line. Gordon Black decides that with only 20 seconds of injury time played, the first half will come to an end. Dreadful conditions here. The game played in pretty good spirit and with plenty of skills, especially up front. But the end of that 40-odd uh, minutes says that it's done Gannon 8 and Balamina 12. There's the Ulster coach, Davy McMaster, who's uh, an interested spectator down here at Stevenson Park and uh, dressed for the conditions, as you can see. So Dungannon start the second half, and Ballymena have decided because their jerseys have been uh, so soaked and waterlogged that they've changed to their alternative strip, which is red. So just to avoid any confusion, Dungannon still in white, and Ballymena now in red. Uh, will those new dry jerseys make any difference, one wonders, and I don't think they'll stay <laughs> dry for very long. Derek McAleese, kicker of 12 points. McCackie, good driving through by the massive Davy Tweed. In fact, it was Davy Allen who's playing at number eight. Again, I need to bring that across. Look how well Jeremy Hastings has done that. Now, here they go for the secondary shove. This is Blair looking for the gap. Balamina man has gotten away. Gordon Black right on the spot and Dungannon have got a perfect chance to close the deficit to a single point. Good scrummaging and good back row work. Keith McGarry with 31 league points so far this season. Dungannon's top scorer. And that's 34 points, and more importantly, it means that with coming up to seven minutes gone, it's now Dungannon 11 and Balamina 12. Balamina waited and watched, and McGarry really skidded right through that waterlogged pitch, and a beautiful, beautiful kick. Match it. Better strike and control by Balamina. It's big Davy Allen. Match it. Nicely released. Lang. That's out to Chambers. Support from Matchett. This is great adventure from Balamina. He could have done with some more support. And Wallace was there. And Kenny Andrew. So a good thrust by Andy Matchett on the narrow side. Lovely mazy jinking run. So typical of the player who's been uh, such a good scrum half for Ulster this season. Front rows collapse. McGarry doesn't quite catch it properly. That's Chambers. That's nice. Good tackle that was by Nelson. Hacked through by Tyrone Howe. A lot of red shirts there. Back they go. Thumping tackle by Paul Archer. That's the way to knock a defender down. Chambers over his own line. And what a great piece of counter-attacking and harrying and harassing from Dungannon, that really was counter-attacking at its best. So Dungannon will want to get this ball into the scrummage very quickly, I'm sure. Plenty of room on the narrow side for Dungannon. Jeremy Hastings into Kerry, who couldn't quite control, and the ball, I think, had just gone forward. Well, it was ever so close because Hastings' little scoop pass couldn't be quite picked up by Ronnie Carey on the wing. But Balamina have taken it quickly, and Johnny Boyd has punched. 
He got a try in the first half from a charge down, and he's got one in the second half. Keith McGarry runs away with the ball, and as Johnny Boyd, the flank forward for his second try, right out of nothing at all from a quickly taken Balamina put in. And uh, unfortunately, it looks as if Johnny Boyd has got himself injured in the process. Well, it looked very serious for Johnny Boyd for quite a while, but uh, this tough little chap has decided to stay on the field. So Ashley Blair. And he hasn't judged it too badly, but not well enough to bring it in. And Blair grimaces. And Dungannon take the lead by 16 points to 12 with almost 15 minutes of the second half gone. Lang well taken in by Dungannon so Balamina under a little bit of pressure now having led for most of this game certainly at half time and Dungannon have come back with a vengeance Davy Allen trying to pick up on the retreat help from Stephen Lusk It's good work by the Ballymena pack. Steve Smith in the middle of things, trying to wrestle it back. Davy Tweed, number five. And Gannon coming round, and the penalty chance. And one wonders from this range, and into the wind, will Derek McAleese go for goal? And uh, McAleese, I think, is quite happy to have a crack. He's got four out of four, and he hoped to make it five out of five. And after a little bit of deliberation, he says yes. So Derek McAleese with four first half penalties. This is first attempt in the second half. And uh, this is a pretty important kick for Balamina if they're to stay in touch. Nicely struck. Oh, and just over the bar and no more. So five out of five for Derek McAleese. 37 league points for the season. And just two one point now between the sides. That's better by Dungannon. You can see Hastings having looked to see what's available. Here he goes. End of a dummy. Needs the brother Johnny there who clears a path for him. Blair waits. McGarry. That's for Ronnie Carey to chase. Alan Simpson takes. Was moving. He's held off Carey and Nelson. That's Mickey Rainey. Great support by Balamina. Kenny Andrew, the skipper, goes to ground. And Dungannon transgress. Well, Balamina, we're going to have to do something very quickly with this. Mickey Rainey. Well, there's a captain's role. A former skipper, Mickey Rainey. Captain Balamina to the double in 89 and 90. Dungannon have retrieved that. Blair's got underneath that. Oh, what a great kick. Well, that says it all. Well, Ashley Blair has had a terrific afternoon and it's been rounded off by the most glorious opportunist drop goal. It was well won by the pack. He didn't have that much room. He had to scoop right underneath it and lift it out of the mud and didn't he do it in style? Well, there's Blair who uh, has been one of the chief architects in how long? Well, I can tell you, he probably won't hear me, but uh, we've had uh, half a minute of injury time played and there's probably another couple. All right, will the Dungannon stranglehold continue for long enough to give them the two league points? Down goes Gary Leslie, and up gets Gary Leslie. That's good skills by the tight head prop. He's been bundled over. My goodness, Blair is playing well. That's Archer into space. And Carey accelerates, keeps it in play. What a great little kick. Lang over his own line, taken by McGarry and by Archer. And my goodness, Dungannon not content with a four-point lead they're going for a bit more so a grandstand finish by the county tyrone side and what a lovely little chip kick it was by ronnie carey who came thundering through and uh, a lot of people would have been content to put it into touch so here's blair jeremy hastings controls as blair waits 
Hastings picks up. Great drive by the Dungannon back row. They're going to try to rumble over. And Gordon Black is there, and they've got it. Great try by Dungannon, and that really does seal it. And it's Willie Anderson himself. It really was a great scrummage. They wheeled right round. It was picked up by Jeremy Hastings. And they drove for the line. And all those muddy, muddy white shirts came in. And somewhere underneath that is Willie Anderson. Oh, well, there's a, a smile to warm any winter's day. And Willie is thrilled. Nicely there for the conversion. And uh, he says to Willie Anderson, I'd like you on this side if you're going to hold it for me, old lad. And Anderson stretches out all six feet five of that lean frame of his. And Blair to set the seal on a famous Dungannon victory. And one that should keep them perhaps in section one for next season. Gordon Black raises his arm to acknowledge the conversion. And Ashley Blair is uh, well reasonably pleased it seems with the afternoon's efforts as Ulster club mate Davy Tweed embraces him a great win for Dungannon this afternoon and that's one which will certainly increase their hopes of staying up in section one next season and really puts the pressure on Kenny Andrew and his Ballymena team the final score at Stevenson Park Dungannon 26 and Ballymena 15 Willie Anderson, well done. Two very, very valuable points. It's not that often that you've beaten Ballymena in recent years in a, a competitive situation. I think for me it's probably about 12. In fact, I don't know if I've ever beaten Ballymena uh, at any competition level. Uh, for me, it's certainly tremendous to win today, and as it was to win the Jack Kelly Cup. Four points now from, from your six games, but you wouldn't say that Dungannon were uh, out of the wood by any means, would you? No, no, we've, <coughs> we've still a few games, we've a couple of games to go now, Wesley Way and Shannon at home, and certainly I would like to get another couple of points to feel that we have, uh, you know, sincerely staying in the first division. But certainly today helped us to, to make sure that, you know, we're, we're out of the, the, the danger zone. What was it about the Dungannon performance today that gave you most pleasure? I think the first half, display even though we give away a couple of three silly penalties the first half uh, performance against the one we retained the ball well we played the short side we scrummaged well and then in the second half we um, put the pressure on and got a couple of tries that actually were vital your own try at the end obviously gave you a great deal of pleasure it was one of the things which perhaps uh, typified the sort of forward game that Dungannon have, have been playing all season well <coughs> we've obviously on a day like today it was very difficult obviously to move the ball even though we wanted to do that uh, it was going to be a lottery to move the ball we would like to to play a 15-man game today it didn't suit us to do that but we have a good enough mobile pack and a strong enough pack and a well drilled enough pack to be able to score tries as we did at the end where they pulled me over the line it's a desperately, desperately competitive league, whether it's Section 1 or Section 2. I mean, how do you feel it's, it's been reflected at the top level as far as, say, the Irish team are concerned? Well, uh, talking about the Division 1 and in and, and relation to Division 2, I think you can get away with maybe a couple of weaknesses in Division 2 on your side. You can't get away with uh, any weaknesses at all in <coughs> Section 1 if you want to survive there. I think it's going to take a while for that sort of uh, aggression and uh, commitment to maybe to... to move through to the Irish side. There's, there are a number of players, a, a sufficient number of players, to be able to do Irish rugby justice. And uh, I think it's just going to take a little bit of time. And um, I feel that we can actually, I think we can actually come through this very tough period in Irish rugby.